The world is almost ready to launch itself to the moon and Mars and start living there. But a simple basic question is also not answered on the internet properly. Now let me give you an example. If you go and Google out biotech career guide, of course you'll have a lot of information from Biotechnica of course. But the moment you look for bioinformatics career guide, there's hardly enough practical, pragmatic information available. Now the problem is, in the absence of right information, most of you are shooting in the dark and that means we won't achieve success, right? Most places you will find initial phases of you know, curriculum, how you have to become a bioinformatician. That's what people are talking. But today in this video, I'm here to talk about outcome-based procedure you have to follow to achieve grand success in the field of bioinformatics. Now, let me start by talking about bioinformatics in general. Now, most of you think that bioinformatics is something wherein you are going with the computers, right? And then you are playing around with some softwares and doing some analysis and then outputting the result, right? But how this can be applied and implemented across the spectrum in various research methodologies, that is something we have to learn. Now, let me give you a simple example. So you have heard of wet lab and then you have heard of dry lab, right? Most of the people think that a bioinformatician will only work in a dry lab setup. But the truth is, a bioinformatician will be working in both the setups. And that is where the clue is. Whether you are a bachelor's in any other field, you can become a bioinformatician. Whether you are a master's in any other field, you can still become a bioinformatician. Whether you are a PhD in some other field, in biosciences, as long as you've done in biosciences, you can still become a bioinformatician. And that is where the outcome is, my dear friend. Problem is, nobody tells you, everybody says, thinks that, okay, if you do this degree, then only you become this, right? If you do X, you get Y. No. Do you know how many IT professionals are electronics engineers or, uh, you know, biotechnologists who are IT professionals? The truth is, anybody with basic training can become IT professional. The same way, anyone can become a bioinformatician. But since we are talking about a career guide for bioinformatician, let's start with the basic. Okay, some people say that you have to do a BSc in bioinformatics. I would say not necessary. A BSc in biotechnology will be much better or a BSc in life sciences is much better. Because people are thinking the same old traditional way. But the truth is industry has moved on. They don't want a hardcore bioinformatician. They want someone who can understand biology first and then apply bioinformatics into it, right? If you don't understand biology, you cannot apply bioinformatics. So no matter you do a BSc in biotechnology or a BTEC in biotech or a BSc in bioinformatics, anything is fine, okay? Now, then why do they have the degree? Let me answer that question. Now, if in case you want to become a hardcore software engineer in biotech, or a bioinformatic sector, let's say that you're going to code softwares for companies like Schrodinger, that's where you need a BSc Bioinformatics. Otherwise, no. If you want to go into research, you can directly jump in and do your BSc Biotech, okay? Now, coming to MSc, what should you choose? If you are at the BSc level, and no matter what degree you've done, I would recommend then it makes sense to go for MSc Bioinformatics. And in our country, two to three colleges are really good in bioinformatics. One of them I highly recommend is IBAB, Institute of Bioinformatics and Biotechnology, which is located in Bangalore. It, there's huge demand for them, okay? They have been associated with Biotechnica for last 15, 18 years now. And they are really good, okay? And they have a very good placement record also. So IBAB is the best college for MSc Bioinformatics. Now coming to, uh, there are other uh, colleges like Amrita Institute of Bioinformatics, I think, Amrita Vishwa Vidya Peetham, that's what they call it. So there also bioinformatics is a good one, okay, that also you can try. Now apart from that, anywhere also if you are trying for MSc Bioinformatics, should be fine as long as they have a computer lab with some good servers, okay. So that's where masters you can do. Now the question is, what kind of opportunities you'll get after bachelors and masters? When you do a bachelor's in bioinformatics, you can get some basic lab assistant jobs or uh, research assistant jobs. And uh, you will not get uh, high profile jobs after a BSc in bioinformatics. So you have to do definitely do MSc bioinformatics. That's something undeniable. But yes, 
if during your bachelor's or during your master's. If you have done industrial project, you have published some papers, then only the industry will absorb you. Okay, and where can you do that? You can do all of that at Biotechnica. We have bioinformatics final year internships, projects, industrial projects with placement assistance, with assistance to publish your papers, and of course, get jobs into the industry. So all of that is covered, whether you are a bachelor's in bioinformatics or a master's in bioinformatics, we have you covered, okay? Now, what will happen after your master's is, master's degree will definitely pay better than the BSc in bioinformatics. That's uh, a no-brainer. But in bioinformatics, a completion of a master's degree will help you land more interesting jobs. It will give you more independence and it will allow you to work on some advanced projects, okay? And basically, once you've done a master's in bioinformatics, you should try out AI ML projects, right? So uh, with a background in uh, bioinformatics, you can go into biomedical field, you can go into biotech field, you can go into PhD also. And there are companies looking for MSc bioinformatics people and MSc biotech people also who have training for bioinformatics. So you can take the training and the project at Biotechnica and then you can go ahead. Details are given in the description. You can always check it out. The next internship is starting from 8th of uh, October. Okay. Every three months it repeats. So if in case you are you know, watching this video later, later than 8th October, you have to wait till probably February or March. Then only this will come back again. So if in case you are interested, you can always pre-book your internship slots at Biotechnica by clicking the link in the description. Now after masters, where can you get placed? right so there are two approaches now for getting a job after masters okay one can be you can be in the back end or the background of developing softwares for the biotech industry or bioinformatics industry for example you could you could be working with uh, various biomedical companies or bioinformatics companies such as elucidata such as dr reddy's also has bioinformatics various other uh, companies also have bioinformatics companies okay now coming to the other side of the spectrum where you can be absorbed into the wet lab. So that can be a bioinformatics analyst, bioinformatics scientist. There are various other jobs which I'll tell you in the salaries also I'll tell you. So after a master's degree, you can get jobs in wet lab. Let's say Biocon or Syngene or Zydus or Torrent or Dr. Reddy's or Biotechnica. So we are doing wet lab job also and dry lab jobs also. You can get a job there. So if you are uh, involved if you are interested in genomic data analysis and all of that whole genome sequencing so all that kind of jobs you will get a genome analyst or a scientist you can become in the biotech companies as well as pharma companies so that's about the masters now if in case you want to get into these companies the market is saturated so you need some kind of initial push right and that's what biotechnica will do First, we'll take you as an intern, we'll train you, and then we'll give you industrial projects with our Biotechnica CRO. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and uh, get placed into these companies. And there's a company called Base Solve in Ahmedabad. They're hiring exclusively a lot of bioinformaticians you can try there as well, right? So that's about Bioinformatics MSc. Now, many of you will be like, why don't I go for a PhD in Bioinformatics, right? Why should I stop at MSc? Now, two problems. The first problem is the amount of time you will invest in PhD, okay? In the same amount of time, you can gain experience in the industry and the industrial experience will carry more weightage than the PhD. But we can always have a debate on that. If you are interested in going abroad, let's say Europe or US and you want a job there, then PhD is a must, I would say, because highly qualified people are easily getting visa and uh, they can easily get a job there. So a PhD again would be recommended. So PhD in computational biology or applications of AI, ML and bioinformatics. Again, for that also Biotechnica can help you. So you should go for CSIR net if you want to do it from India. And if you want to go, go abroad after MSc in bioinformatics, you should apply for various universities where uh, bioinformatics related, computational biology related research is going on. It, uh, right from Harvard to MIT, everybody is working on bioinformatics by the way. So you can get a job there so that's about your phd now one the merit of phd is your youth years will go into phds you will not be able to utilize it for earning you will see your classmates earning and you are still you know studying so that's a kind of a, a dilemma and uh, you know it's a mental confusion and mental stress which happens to people but again it's a mind thing but definitely if you want to dedicate you should do it but what excites me today telling you that bioinformatics is really hot as of today is because 
of the advent of AI ML. See, bioinformatics was always there. It is not that it was not there. Let me give you an idea. See, 20 years ago also, I, I saw bioinformatics was there. Okay, there were companies. But what changed really from then and now is the genomic data analysis has become cheaper. The NGS has become cheaper. We have more computers which can analyze vast amount of data. And then we have the AI ML which can also find patterns and assist the bioinformatician to do a better job. So overall what I, I feel is bioinformatics is on a boom as of today and will continue to be there till 2030. Beyond 2030, AI ML will take over and bioinformaticians who don't have AI ML will be replaced. So that is something you have to learn. Okay. Now what kind of jobs you can get? You can get a job like MSc Bioinformatics can get bioinformatics scientist jobs. Now, what kind of jobs you can get in bioinformatics? You can become a bioinformatics scientist, okay? And then you can become a research scientist in wet lab also. You can work as a biostatistician in various um, biological data and AI databases companies. You can become a microbiologist. You can become a zoologist or a wildlife biologist with a bioinformatics expertise. You can become a mo government molecular biologist and various other bioinformatics based jobs are available. The salary will start from $60,000 in US. It can go up to $500,000 that's in US. But in India, it is starting at around 35 to 40,000 rupees per month and it is going up to 25 lakhs per annum. So that's where uh, the range is right now. Now, uh, as of today in 2025, but it will obviously grow only in the future. The only bioinformatician will grow who has worked on AIML, who has applied AIML in NGS or um, in genomic data analysis, whole genome sequencing and all of that. But somebody who just thinks that, okay, this is uh, another IT job, no. Bioinformatics jobs are not only IT jobs. There are a lot of wet lab work which can get involved. And if you have expertise and if you can understand, you can design a lot of UI UX. So that is one important thing you should know. There are various bioinformatics companies which are developing apps now, okay, or they are developing softwares now. So a good hands-on on coding is required. And if you bring in on the table AI ML expertise also, definitely you are in demand. So bioinformatics sits in between coding and AI ML. If you have ex expertise in bioinformatics, you should learn AI ML. If you have no expertise in bioinformatics, first learn coding, then go for bioinformatics, then go for the AI ML and all of this can be covered through Biotechnica's data science training program, data science and biology training program. So this is all about the career guidance. Now coming to the last part, which is how bright the future will be for bioinformaticians. See bioinformatics sits on the shoulders of computers, right? So if the computer industry grows, if the computing power grows, which we know has been growing exponentially, right? then obviously bioinformatics will grow. So you are sitting on the shoulders of two sciences, not just biotech and not just IT. You are sitting on the shoulders of both. So you have the power of accelerating biotech research using IT tools. In fact, that's called bioinformatics. So that's all about today's video. I hope I was able to uh, give you a clear picture about the outcome based uh, procedure for uh, bioinformatics as a career but I'm sure I must have missed out so you please go ahead and let me know if you have any questions right and uh, I will try to answer them in the comment section and if it is too valuable I will definitely make a video see because of limited time I may not be able to reply to each one of you but I do read every comment and I will definitely make a video or comment there as soon as possible so thank you so much for watching this video and I wish you all the best in your bioinformatics career take care